Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Progress Report for June 26th, 2019. Um, as uh, you probably are already aware, I am not Bob Backus. I'm Mike Farley, typically the genial co-host on this affair. Uh, but tonight, Bob is not available, at least uh, for now, and so we are going to press on without him, the wonders of uh, live TV. Um, so we will press on without him, uh, but we do have uh, a great show ahead for you. We're going to talk about activism in the city of Manchester. We're, we're getting into the 4th of July season, and everybody knows what happens in New Hampshire right after the 4th, 4th of July, the political season hits. So um, we're going to talk about how people can get activated, either in politics or, or in the community, maybe a little side, aside from politics, um, or, or, or on both sides of politics. But we, we've got a couple guests that are going to talk about that, and we hope that you will call in uh, to participate, maybe share your activism experience. Um, the number to call in is 640-3091, and we hope you will call. But we are going to begin the show as we've been trying to do uh, uh, for the past few shows. Uh, with a little feature that I like to call lib splaining, and I'm going to uh, uh, explain what that is. You know, there's a there's a real pejorative term about liberals that people on Fox News and and a lot of uh, Republicans like to use about us. Um, I'm not going to say it because it's offensive, but it begins with lib, and then they put the end of another word on it. So what what this lib splaining um, uh, feature does is I try to explain to some of uh, our uh, Republican uh, and, and and conservative friends um, facts of the world that they may not be getting right and so today very quickly very uh, uh, succinctly uh, we're going to do a little lib splain where I'm going to talk about three things that are not the same and then we're going to talk about something two things another pair of things that are the same uh, the first things that are not the same in, and, and we talked about this last show impeachment hearings are not impeachment and I'm not going to go back over what we talked about last show. Just remember this for the quiz. Impeachment hearings are not impeachment. Another fact that you have to be aware of is weather is not climate. Now, you can put these the other way around. You could say climate is not weather. So why does this apply? This applies when someone says, well, geez, it's cold out, so there can't be any climate change. Weather is it's cold out climate change is climate weather is not climate and finally something that we're going to be hearing an awful lot about i think in the uh, upcoming election cycle uh, the stock market market is not the u.s economy just because the stock market is doing well we all love that any any of us who have uh, a retirement account in the stock market we love it but that is not the same thing as saying that the u.s economy is doing well that's a whole nother set of indicators so those are three things uh, three pairs of things that are not the same we're now going to do uh, two things that are the same the detention camps in which our government is housing migrant children at the southern border are the same as concentration camps. They meet the classic definition. There was a big brouhaha when uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, made that observation. A uh, lot of pushback. People outraged that uh, she would go there, uh, but those outraged people were not informed as to history. In history, the term concentration camp is by it meets classically is is the definition of what we are doing on our southern border we are impounding people against their will without due process of law not for any violation that they individually did but rather because they are part of a group that is the classic example of a concentration camp. So, uh, and, and by the way, um, uh, scores if not hundreds of scholars have come out in support of AOC's um, uh, definition of concentration camp and identifying it with those camps where we're housing children in such squalor. Um, and, and I think that it's sunk in because you haven't heard that pushback anymore. So those are the four things I wanted to talk about. Climate is not Weather is not climate, impeachment hearings are not impeachment, the stock market is not the U.S. economy, and the detention camps in which we're holding children in squalor are concentration camps. And with that, we'll move on to some more fun topics, more upbeat topics, more progressive topics. And um, first, I, I guess, uh, why don't we bring in our guests? Why don't you introduce yourselves? Good evening, so everybody may, out there. I'm Pat Long, may have seen uh, current Long. Board of School <laughs> Committee, State Rep uh, in War Three. 
Good evening, everyone. Rick Maynard, general troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Rick Maynard, activist extraordinaire, and and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, Pat, uh, you're probably a little bit more well known than Rick, but Rick, we're glad to give you a platform to talk about what you're doing because you've got a project in mind, and we're going to lead off with you. Um, you want to improve activism, improve participation in the city of Manchester, and you've got some pretty specific ideas as to how you want to do that. And why don't you lead off and briefly give us a, a little bit of your background and, and why you want to get into this? Well, my background is I, I was in college getting, going for electrical engineering at Wentworth Institute in Boston, Mass. And I lived in Reading, and it happened to be adjacent to the only Superfund site in the United States with continued construction going on. And I, I learned that I didn't want to be an electrical engineer, which was sitting in front of a desk and doing a lot of drawings. I a little more physically active than that. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I worked as a home health aide, a hospice. I worked with uh, Interface out of Newton Maths that was run by a Dr. Rick Ingrazi that did New Age magazine. I brought in some of the leading physicians in the world to s give lectures such as Harvard. We brought in Elizabeth Kubler-Ross on uh, death and dying. We brought in Frederick Laboyer on gentle birthing. And I got to go to these classes for free. And as I working for North Metropolitan Home Care Service, I was working as a hospice, a home health aide, and many of my clients were from Wuben, and these people had worked in where this toxic chemical site was with the industries that were there that caused this problem to exist. And uh, I wasn't happy about that. I was, uh, and it was affecting Wells G&H in Wuben. It was the part of the Abajona Mystic Watershed Association, part of the Mystic River, and it was affecting the water supply possibly for 28 communities. So I became active. And that's what got me active was I lived next door. We had streets in the town. The leukemia clusters were up, and they had great difficulty proving direct link. I, I mean, we had the problem that this existed, but how many people experience a lot of things in their life, and how can you prove it's directly linked? And, of course, the industries have plenty of money to spend to argue that, of course, it's not related to them. And... Um, but eventually so, so bring bring us into Manchester though. So you you you've got this activist spirit. You've you you've done something in your hometown. What what do you bring? What do you want to bring into Manchester? What do you see as a need here uh, to to activate folks? Well, one of the things I think we can accomplish is making that availability, the knowledge, to, to and the education around issues, so that you can become an informed, active citizenry. So that requires two elements. One is the element of being able to give good information on the topics that you're concerned about. And the other is to pr present what ways, what opportunities are available to put that energy to positive work. And that's what I'm hoping to do by participating in this. Well, perfect. And Pat, I'm going to turn so, to you because yeah, I, 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 uh, I have driven by, see, I've seen you picking up leaves in, in the cemetery. If there's yeah. an activist in the city, He's run into you at one point or another. You are an yeah, activist. I, I, uh, Talk about that. Springboard I mean, about that. Uh, well, I mean, I was a ward of the state at three years old. So uh, by the time I uh, got my ears pulled through high school, um, I, I recognized early that volunteering made me feel good. So I didn't volunteer because I was helping people. I was volunteering because I felt good about volunteering. And that was really the only good identity I got within myself because other than that I wasn't feeling very good about myself um, so uh, even to this day uh, you know so I started coaching football I started uh, getting involved in CASA court appointed special advocates uh, and it started giving me a sense of well-being uh, so that's you know the mission today I'm hoping is to uh, persuade people that you know we're not we're not asking for you to get involved for 20 hours a week you know, let, let's tr start with two. Whatever interest you have, commit yourself to two hours. It, it, it just put your, get your feet wet, first of all, because you are volunteering, whether it's at the cemetery, whether it's at New Horizon, whether it's in a campaign, whether, whatever it is, two hours a week, you're going to volunteer for something. 
Uh, and there are a lot of nonprofits, non-governmental organizations right here in the city of Manchester that are hungry for, for volunteers, absolutely. and they'll welcome you with absolutely. open arms. You will not, you will never feel more welcome than if you walk into a place and you offer to volunteer. Well, some and, of your and, time. It, and it gives you a sense of belonging to the community. I mean, communities work best best when we have volunteers, and Manchester, uh, Manchester is a city with. A plethora this, of volunteers. This place would not exist without a multitude of volunteers. And That's right. And it, it doesn't show a lot of times, but dear God, I'm going to use an example. I was, I, I, I spent two hours Sunday afternoon listening to an Irish band at the gazebo at Stark Park. Yeah. Completely, the whole thing put on by the Friends of Stark Park, a, an all-volunteer organization. They've got a board of directors. They're always looking for volunteers. You can join them, uh, and, 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 and there's membership. Uh, and 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 had this organization not had a group of volunteers, there would be no concert. Those hundreds of people that were sitting in the park eating ice cream, watching the show, would have been some you know, had nothing else. You know, some something else sure. wouldn't have had this wonderful opportunity. The, the, the city would not have had this cultural experience. And right. all of it cost the city nothing. And it was started by up. people volunteering yep. to, to get this, they to, had get, the to idea. get that together. Um, you know, and that's what could happen with volunteerism. Uh, you know, the, the, the strong point is that it, it makes you part of the, a stronger part of the community, that you're doing something, uh, not getting paid on your free time, to help whatever aspect you decide to volunteer in, you know. Uh, so, I mean, there's boards and commission when you yeah. Let's let's talk you, a little bit you, about that. Yeah, when you open up the website to Manchester, there's a there's a link to boards and commission. Uh, you don't have to be an expert in a lot of these. You have to have some familiar familiarity. Um, you know, like the board of, you know, like the zoning board. You, but you, but, you but they, have they have, there's a variety of boards and commissions that are required by law. The city has to have these in place. Um, and and they, they, ha they have to function. And without, the, the, there's no pay involved. Without the volunteers to be on the boards, they the city can't do its legal obligations. Right. Um, so what, like, like I served with you on a heritage commission. I, I, I was not, my knowledge isn't in, conservation or heritage history that's not my knowledge but after about a month i i got it uh you know i understood what their goal was and mm -hmm. pretty much you don't have to have that experience to be able to sit on that heritage commission and do what you feel is in the best interest of the city yeah but if you're out there and you happen to have a passion for um building development or for history or or for manchester history in particular the heritage commission is a great place to volunteer sure. a couple hours a month they sure. meet once a month for a couple hours uh they seriously consider um a, a lot of a variety of topics dealing with um the how the city of manchester looks in its historic districts and 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 it's a great way you, you meet great people with expertise that you you know you can feed off of yeah um it, it's just a great way to get involved with the city yeah. um and there are other commissions um like that um do you do you want to make any other suggestions i know you, i think it was your list you brought this list um. well i wanted to say that you know presently i'm disabled and this gives me a purpose now because i can't i'm an electrician by trade and i can't walk anymore and part time i was active in various different things and now i have a purpose uh, we there's several commissions looking for people people and uh, we have the board of health so if you're interested in medical background yeah, that's for a dentist they're looking for a dentist on that one yeah yeah well, and some of these commissions do have requirements they yeah. they can't have people of the same all of the same political party right. they like to have people from different wards so there are restrictions but there's there's enough of these commissions that if you really want to get involved there's probably a place you can land and and if not there are other volunteer opportunities as well that we can talk about when when we get on the other side of the break but sure um what uh i mean why don't you run through uh the list of what's open i mean you've done the research yeah uh, we, we can do a little services. want ad for the city you know office of youth services advisory board and uh yeah what qualifications is that you know office of youth services serves our youth um i think any parent would qualify. Uh, any anyone who's thinking of being a parent would qualify. It's it's a matter of youth services. Yep. You know. 
So if you have a building trades background, one of the other committee boards looking for people is uh, building boards of appeals. So that would be looking for someone with a little bit of history in those particular trades. Yep. But all of this is available on the website. If you go on the website, you can click the link. It's over on, on the right-hand uh, side, right side yep. toward the bottom, Boards and Commissions. And they will give you a list of every single board. It starts, I think, with the Airport Authority, and it goes down to the Zoning Board of Adjust Adjustment from A to Z. Uh, they, there, there is a Conservation Commission. Um, Bob Backus has served in the Conservation Commission. He's, he's a well-known um, uh, conservation advocate, um, perfect for him. Sure. Uh, I, I served on the Heritage Commission. I, I, I have a history major. I, I, I work in the construction business. I'm familiar with, with uh, building and renovation. It, it was an ideal fit for me. Um, well, during your chairmanship, uh, during your chairmanship, you spearheaded um, the demolition uh, ordinance change uh, that we were looking for. Yeah, which is uh, still before the board. It's on the right. table, but it's still before the board. Historically, you go apply for a demolition uh, permit, and two days later, you get it. Next thing you know, there's a building knocked down that has a his, has a history value to it, and no one's taking a look. And no one's no one's taking a look. And all so. the ordinance would do is just say, "Hey, take a look before you knock it down." Exactly. And by the way, I since we're talking about it, I am going to say the Harvey House uh, down at the end of South Willow oh, Street still stands, That's thanks right. to the efforts uh, of the members of the Heritage Commission and the exactly. community advocates that uh, volunteered and gathered around it. That building is that would have been down, yeah. and it's still up. And yeah. uh, so that's a proud thing. And all you know, the Chandler House as well, um, still breathing, still still up. Right. Uh, through efforts of people uh, who are volunteering in, in this regard. Um, yeah. So there's certainly that. Um, there is an arts commission. If you happen to be into the arts or if you are an artist, um, they're, lo they're looking for people. Um, and the other great thing about this is if, if you are not even sure you want to get into it, you can come in as an alternate and sit and watch how it operates, um, and, and you you may only be called upon if if there's not a quorum or something like right. that. So that's another way to yeah. come in is to come in as an alternate. Yeah. But we have exhausted the first 20 minutes of the show. We're gonna step back and do a very quick break, but we'll be back. We hope you'll call in if if you have any experience uh, volunteering in Manchester, whether it's uh, within the structure of the city government or uh, more importantly, we'd like to hear from people who volunteer outside. You know, have you coached little league? Uh, speaking of Little League, I mean, Central Little League right now, is there, there's, a, there's a crisis going on. Uh, we've had Little Leagues have to merge. Uh, you know, that's what happens when you don't have the volunteers, when right. you don't have the participation. So um, if you've had any of that, call and tell us about it. Um, we'd, like to, we'd like to hear from you. And the number is 640-3091. But for now, we'll take a quick 15-second break. We're going to regroup and figure out what we'll talk about next. But we'll be right back. <laughs> Well, welcome back, folks. We hope that you stayed with us through that brief uh, break. We're talking about a, a, a very uh, ideal topic for the Progress Report because it kind of fits right in with our mission here at the Progress Report, and that is volunteerism in the city of Manchester, uh, which is all about solving problems. I, I'm going to tell, tell a story about my de dear departed dad. Um, if I ever wa walked up to my dad and, and, and said, hey, you know, there's, there's, there's a... 
there's something on the ground or there's a hole over there the first thing he would say is why didn't you just fix it why are you telling people about it so I, I think that's where my sense of you know get in there and fix problems that's I think that's where they came from he really instilled that in me and he was a volunteer par excellence as far as he his focus was always youth programs uh, particularly youth sports he was uh, for for decades involved in that um, a real leader in that regard but that's where I got my kind of spirit that you know if, sure. if, if everybody picks up an oar and pulls on it this boat's going to move forward yeah. and if nobody does then we're dead in the water you know so yeah. um but uh, we talked a little bit about um you know the various boards and they're always turning over openings people resigning because they move that kind of thing so go on the website find something that you'd like to do the how do you get on the board you put together a little resume you call your alderman, and they will nominate. They're they're hungry for folks like this, so they will nominate you, um, and then within a couple of weeks, um, you know, the board of mayor and alderman approves it. Um, I haven't heard of anybody really having any difficulty. You know, as as long Same as you're a pretty now. straight up person, yep. uh, so it's very easy. Um, you, you, and and the time commitment varies from from board to board, but there are some that have a very minimal time commitment, uh, but do very important work. So uh, we hope you'll do that. But let's kind of change it up a little bit we'll, we'll talk a little bit there are issues in Manchester um, we have all kinds of issues from homelessness to um, our opioid crisis um, to, to panhandling uh, affordable housing it, it's 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 not getting better it's getting worse um, and and there are more and I'm sure they'll come up in our conversation but what I'd like to talk about take an issue and then see what volunteer experiences are available on that issue and let's lead off with homelessness because sure. that I, I i think that has um fingers that reach out into the opioid into the drug abuse into the mental illness into the um availability of affordable housing all of that um uh, in particular we have veterans homelessness which uh, is a is a shame upon a shame um so let's talk a little Sorry. bit about that if you if i don't care who Actually, goes first Rick, you want to? You want to? Why don't we experience? lead that? I'll lead off with you. Yeah, I became disabled and I started receiving disability, and the what they would refer to as structural homelessness, where if you look at a one-bedroom housing in Manchester, the average rental price is twelve to eighteen hundred dollars for a one-bedroom, and I actually come from uh, working a lot of hours, and I, my disability rate was rather high, and. Uh, I couldn't afford it by myself. And we got a three bedroom place. We had three people that were disabled and we were between the three of us able to afford it. One of the persons, his monthly check was a little over $700 per month. So you can imagine trying to rent a, rent a place in the city of Manchester with a monthly check of $700 a month. So there were three of us disabled, disappointingly enough two of them have since passed away. And I found myself in a place that I couldn't afford by myself with insufficient time to be able to find a different place to be. So I spent uh, a long period of time homeless. I mean, I was bouncing from hotel, transient housing, boarding rooms, which you can only stay at for 90 days. After 90 days, you get tenant rights, and they don't like to see deal with anyone that has tenant rights. So essentially, at 90 days, you get kicked out. Um, so let me bring up, so in conversation with Rick, he, he brought a point to me that I thought, I would never have thought of this, and what a brilliant idea. He says, hey, Pat, how about if the city networks with people, I could, I could interview people, two other people, so I'm not homeless, they're making money on Social Security, they're respectful, they're not drinkers, they're good, good people, and I can network, network with them and get an apartment, right? Why, why, it's harder looking for an apartment for Rick when Rick could look for his own apartment with two other people like he had before. They're able to afford And an we apartment. certainly have the tools to, available to to in our toolbox to, to be able to uh, network uh, people together. Um, you see it all the time at colleges with new freshmen coming in right. they communicate with each other so that they can roommate up and combine their resources and the so, elegance and beauty of this solution to a big problem is unbelievable and yet I, no you know and that's, of it. and that's and that's that's having a conversation with somebody who was there yeah you know he knows the solutions you know he he thought forever geez if i could just find two people 
I could be in a place permanently. And they could too. You know, and they could and too. they could too. That's so, the thing. It's mutually um, protective. Right. You, you know, this right. that's a, a I mean, real they're, fantastic they're in the, idea. They're independent. Now, how how would you know? how would that work? Would 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 that be something? I mean, how, what? Yeah, that I would mean, that would work. Would not the, need a lot of resources to no, put something like all, this not together. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, there's more outreach people. Uh, so outreach people know of those that are either disabled. Um, they know what Social Security they would come in. I mean, a lot of these people that are out in the streets have money coming in, um, but just not enough to take care. You know, take care of themselves. Sure. Well, with housing with is rents, the biggest with, uh, one bedroom apartment for for twelve hundred. You know, that's yeah, you can't do that. But you you know, you get three people burden. that are making seven hundred or a thousand dollars a month. You know, now it's doable. Now we could buy food. Now we could get the electric turned on, or maybe get an apartment that includes electric. Um, so. The opportunities there, and how many how many homeless could we affect by doing this? Uh, you know, does that five percent? Do we clear out five percent of the homeless rate? Ten percent? You know, I, I you know I just know that these initiatives by talking to people that are um, living this, uh, they have their own they have solutions. Um, so you're right, we have a lot of outreach people that know individuals. Yeah, they're uh, they're in place know, already. That's right. So do we? Do we set up? Do we set up something where we invite them, have them introduced to each other? Could you live? You know, could we live together? Yeah. Let's yeah. Give I mean, it, it, it's, it's it not like you just pull a name out of a hat. You have there has to be some compatibility. No, that's you know, right. I mean, that's in, right. your, in, in a living together arrangement, of course, right. it's not right. that simple. Um, but the fact that it, it the, the the effort hasn't even been made, no, it, that's ha right. it hasn't been tried. That's right. Um, it, it seems to me well worth worth trying, and we've already Absolutely. got. Um, you know, uh, efforts at solutions in place. We can just right. use those yeah. to, to get yeah, the way up. I mean, I've, I've known Rick forever, being uh, he was an electrician uh, in, a, in the electrician's union. Um, so I know his story. I mean, he was a hard worker, was making great money, and then his wife and him became affected with, with, uh, with medical issues, and, you know, this is what rolled in. I mean, Rick's very capable of taking care of himself, uh, we need to give him the means, and by getting two other people, uh, he could be self-sufficient. You know. No, that, and my that, idea behind this easy. is, anytime I've worked on legislation that I wanted to accomplish change, especially within the state of New Hampshire, is trying to be revenue neutral. Oh yeah, if it costs anything, you're not going to get it. Not in this. Not in this. Yeah. So the idea <laughs> behind this was, I mean, this is what's defined as structural homelessness, mm -hmm. whereas. The income does not equal what the housing costs are. And it sounds like the structural deficit that the state works with, doesn't it? <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. I, I the had bottom to be line with all of us is, you know, but for the grace of God, go I. Yeah. I mean, I'm very fortunate. The, we, I could, I could be there in a heartbeat. We've also. heard the statistic. Uh, I don't, I don't want to misstate it, but 70, 80 percent of Americans across the country couldn't take a four hundred dollar hit. Exactly. You know, that's yeah. every one of our brothers and sisters and our neighbors. That, that's, that's a lot of people, yeah. um, and, and. Uh, we, it's a serious business. It's yeah. a serious business, and 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 it you get knocked off your horse. It's really hard to get back up on it, right. and without a little bit of help. And uh, again, we'll go back in, in in Manchester and in New Hampshire. If it costs anything, it's very hard to get approval of it because I, I don't even know why. I don't know why. It's a it's a it's a mindset that's foreign to me. But right. it, there it is. I mean, yeah. There, there, there's been some uh, major accomplishments uh, these this last term. Oh, uh, there's been some finances put towards absolutely. The, let's the let's hope the governor doesn't that be, have veto here. that. But yes, we uh, had. And, we, and you know, I mean, mental health is covered. The ten year plan is covered. Uh, Child and Family Services is covered. Mm -hmm. No, um, we, we had a, we, in fact, we ran it for two weeks. We did a very good budget oh, okay. show with Senator oh, D'Alessandro yes, yes, and I with did, uh, Representative Mary that. Heath. Yeah. And they, they're both gurus, so they really yeah. dug yeah, into the, the weeds. So uh, we really did a, we, we cut that up. And, and uh, the Committee of Conference um, seems to have uh, come up with a pretty good compromise, but the governor's still threatening well, major, a veto. Major, major so. compromise on, on the Democratic yeah. side. Uh, you know, FMLA, which they campaigned on, that's out. Yeah. Capital gains, that's out. Yeah. You know, so... No, they gave a lot you know, to, to, no, to get close. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I'm anxious. Uh, actually, tomorrow we vote. Um, and we're going to be voting on a continuing resolution. We'll keep an case. eye on you. <laughs> you know, just yeah, in yeah, case. You know what? So. I'm, I, I, I wonder... I'm, I don't know. I, I, I think I think the governor ought you know, you want to veto it. 
you pay the bills. I I, yeah. I, 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 well, I understand the constitutional obligation, but I, I would I, I would get to the continuing resolution later. I'd, I'd, right. I'd let the but governor have to, own this for a while. <laughs> yeah, but we have to be, if there's no continuing resolution, you're looking at July 1st. I know. You're looking at July 1st. No, and by July 4th, the no governor. No money for salaries. So I know. People are getting done. And Thank you, Governor Sununu. I mean, it, 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 it's, so That's what the veto so would the do, tomorrow, isn't it? <laughs> no, well, it is. It is. But the continuing resolution only allows you to. Uh, stay within current stay means, within which current are means. inadequate, and I, we all know it. I think it's 3.5% above. I think what they're proposing, which is inadequate, is, we which all is know. inadequate, and, and and all the all the initiatives you're seeing, people are happy with uh, DC Division of uh, Child and Youth Services getting uh, 70 more people within the next yep. two years. The added beds uh, uh, for that, mental health. That all gets postponed. Yeah, and that all gets changed with renegotiations. So what what else leaves the mental health 10 year plan? What could come out of there? I tell you, I uh, play so, chicken with this governor. He's 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 so on it's, a fool's a, errand uh, to veto this this excellent uh, budget. You know, so I, I think on both sides there were major, major compromise, compromises. So, um, but back to volunteerism. So the the uh, uh, Hill, uh, Hillsborough County delegation met. Um, so we have 33 in Manchester. We have 33 state reps. Uh, in essence, that's a volunteer. That's a volunteer group. Of people. It sure is. Let me tell you. I mean, they, you know, you're at a hundred bucks, uh, and has a member. A lot of a lot of people I didn't know when I first got elected. State reps are county delegates. Yes. So your job is the county also. Yes. You know? In in in, in addition to, and they have a county executive committee that the state reps serve on, and the county convention has to come back together and and approve the budget, and they can never get a quorum because it's a huge right. number of reps that have to be there. Although although and, last week on the nineteenth. Uh, we had 91 people. We needed 61 as a, for a quorum. We had uh, 32 delegates from Manchester show up out of 33. So that was that was the best. I, Who didn't? You know, Who didn't show up? That was the best. I don't want to call them. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to call them out. You're too polite. These, <laughs> you know, you. I don't want to call them out. Oh, well, I mean, he right. may have had an excuse absence. I don't know. People, <laughs> but I was people. looking for the hundred uh, percent. But. You know, that is actually good because when I was in the state house and I would attend those, uh, the Manchester we were making was the calls, having a right? rough time. We were yeah. calling Manchester people, get yeah. over here, we need three more people. Yeah. Um, so there's a zero increase to the budget. Uh, uh, Hillsborough County has $41 million of surplus. Um, you know, so, so we use some of that to zero out the budget. Makes sense. Um, and we have fair some, enough uh, for all, but I would remind folks that the city of Manchester, with all of its burdens uh, that it takes on from surrounding communities, is in Hillsborough County. And I would certainly hope that uh, if Hillsborough County is running a budget, it should come to Manchester. No, I. I mean, I, I'm sorry, a budget, a budget surplus. I, well, I, I well, missed a word. If well, what running. Hillsborough, what Hillsborough County did do is gave uh, four and a half million dollars, which I believe is going to be less, uh, to uh, the independent delivery networks. Mm -hmm. IDNs, they're called independent delivery networks. Um, um, and are those are those the the mobile mental health units that are, are going to be stationed throughout? Because we did a show on that as well. Substance use disorder yep. initiatives. Uh, so my one question to the to uh, Commissioner Myers with Department of Health and Human Services is, with this money that Hillsborough County is going to give you, will we will we be in this state be able to set up services in Belknap County, Coas County? Uh, so they don't need to come to Manchester for the services, and the answer was yes. That's what this money is being used for. So Hillsborough County did agree uh, to the four and a half million dollars uh, for that. I want you to say that again. Are you saying that because Belknap County does not carry its share of the burden, and its citizens come to Manchester, Hillsborough County has to use its budget to put services in Belknap County to keep the problem there. Is that what you just said to me? Because I was not it aware is, of it. It is, but let me give you more. Let me, yeah, but let me <laughs> and give when you, I put it that way, it doesn't me, sound so good. Let me give you more detail. So, so, so the Medicaid at the nursing homes, uh, they, the calculations changed. So we're, we were anticipating um, $4 million of nursing home uh revenue surplus mm -hmm. when those calculations changed it gave us an additional eight million dollars okay like i said we got 40 million dollars of surplus so what we decided to do was give them 50 percent of that added eight million dollars the windfall the, the windfall because right now we're looking at 
services in Manchester that are being provided for people throughout the state. I understand that. So if I could in any little way lower that, because I've been fighting in Concord to get additional funding. When the, when the feds give the state pass-through money from the feds, it gets broken up per capita. Right. Now, I've been arguing, you know, give us, give Manchester a little bit from every town that we're taking care of. Fifteen percent, fifteen percent more, because Auburn getting ten grand, they're not about to give us two thousand of that. They're going to keep the ten grand, but give us more. So the argument wasn't there. They weren't buying it. People in their hometowns weren't about to vote to give Manchester more money, even though they're servicing our our citizens. <laughs> So uh, you're I, giving I needed, me the pragmatic argument, I, I Pat. Needed, you're giving me the pragmatic. Well, I, argument. I needed another. What, how how can we affect this? So, yeah, let's agree to give this money, so that they could start setting up. You know, the benefits of them setting up a service benefits the city of Manchester. You know, now now at the end of the you know at the end of the year, within the next couple of months, they got to show us where this was effective, because they're going to be asking for more. And again, forty one million dollars a surplus. You know that that's you know that's a lot of that's a lot of surplus. It, it is it, it, within a county budget. That's a substantial amount of it, it, you know as they say a million here a million there. Next thing you know you're talking real money. Yeah, we have a hundred and six <laughs> million dollar budget. Yeah. So fifteen percent of that is what whatever that is ten twelve thirteen thirteen million. Gatsby, which is uh, this accounting public accounting uh, policy says you ought to keep between 5 and 15 uh, percent in, 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 in a rainy day fund. Yeah. So, you know, we got the... Uh, but we're know, solid. We got like triple that. Well, not only are we solid with that, we also got 386 acres of buildable lots. Buildable acres. Yeah. I, <laughs> you I, know what I mean? So, I, so yeah, we are. And, and, you know, and that's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing, but... Who knows what the you future know, brings, Pat? You know, you but know. <laughs> Hillsborough County, I mean, where you know, and it includes Nashua. Nashua and Manchester are really taking no, a No, I understand, a hit. but I just, I, you know? I, and, I, and I know you blew right past the first phrase of, of, of my criticism, and that's the failure on the part of the other counties. I've been in the state house. I've heard those people argue against right. uh, funding, the, taking care of their own problem, and then arguing against having Manchester take care of their problem. It's frustrating as all heck, right. and, uh, and and it's and it's uh, really hypocritical, I think. And it's a sad situation that, uh, uh, but despite it, our city continues to grow and thrive. And, you know, we can we'll, we take that burden on our heavy Absolutely. shoulders and, and yeah. carry it. We're up at uh, our second break for the night. Um, we're going to take, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds to regroup because I have no idea what to talk about next. Uh, but we'll figure something out, folks. We have not had a call in. The weather's beautiful. And I think everybody's getting ready to watch the Democratic debate from Nine Miami tonight. That's it. Um, uh, I, I, and I hope they do. I, I hope immediately after. After this show, everybody changes the channel to the, <laughs> to the debates because it's going to be a blockbuster and then follow it up by round two tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I, uh, I'm looking forward to that, too. But right. let's take a quick break here, and uh, we'll figure out, uh, before I ramble on too much, we'll figure out uh, how to close out this show, and we'll be right back, folks. Thanks for staying with us.
Well, welcome back, folks, and thank you very much for staying with us. We appreciate it. Um, if you haven't already uh, gone online and volunteered for something, we hope that this next segment of the show spurs you on to do that. Um, in the last segment, uh, we started talking about issues and then um, interesting ways to tackle them. We let off with homelessness. Um, then we kind of diverged a little bit, um, got into an interesting topic about uh, Manchester's share um, of the burden of, of some of these social problems that we're, we're dealing with, whether it is whether it's the homelessness issue, uh, people who um, come into Manchester already homeless without a, a place to stay, whether it's um, the opioid issue, people coming into Manchester um, either um, to, to stay in the uh, opioid culture or to try to get help uh, on our, our dime. I hate to monetize it like that it's not the way to go but um or or or, or any other the mental health issue um people come to manchester because the services are available um and uh we've had um, a lot of reaction to that uh, one of the reactions from um some corners uh is to just shut these services down altogether if we don't have the services people won't come here we won't have the problem um, talk about that a little bit. Right? Is that is that the solution? It's simple, um, very cheap, very cost effective. Why is that not the solution? Uh, I come to a different conclusion from that. I mean, uh, maybe I have empathy and I care about other people. And that we're only as strong as our weakest link. And you know, it was the point was to treat people as you would want to be treated yourself. And granted, in regards to the uh, safe station program vastly over 2,000 people from Manchester participate and there's a small amount it's less than a hundred people from out of state participated and it looks like you're gonna have a hard time hitting over 500 from the surrounding community so by far it is the majority of Manchester citizens in my opinion that this has proven to that Manchester is having the empathy and I give the alderman uh, mayor and even the county of Hillsborough for addressing this problem my respect and kudos in this regards but that it seems to be that we're functioning as a state agency and that more of this funding should originate from the state itself if we're going to be functioning in that capacity um, that was in regards to the safe stations. After this uh, case study report came out, there was another study from Harvard in regards to the homelessness issue, which was not available at the time this case study was presented. But according to uh, Manchester Mental Health Outreach Coordinator Matt, Matt Bushy, that that was over 80% of the participants in the homeless system in the city of Manchester are Manchester residents. So one the homelessness issue is not the same as the safe station issue so, where, where yeah, it's so, so sometime the perception is the reality and the perception in Manchester is that the majority of, of uh, homeless people are not from Manchester and this Harvard study uh, says that 80% uh, of the people are from Manchester and I don't know if they went back a year or two years uh, where did you come from? How long you been here? A year, a year. So, but so it's those a details. And it and it's not ten percent. We're not in the ten, fifteen, twenty percent range. Correct. We're in the eighty percent range. So, so, so give a wide margin of error. Uh, go twenty percent. It's between sixty and a hundred percent. You, you know go. what I mean? It, it, so, you, you can find a statistic for anything, but if you don't pay attention to what the statistic is telling you, you you're really Right. You're not going to get any right. benefit out of it. There is some benefit in this, in understanding that we are helping our own friends and neighbors, exactly. pe people who have been here and want to stay here. Yep, um, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, now, this is a classic argument. I've had it with my conservative brother for years. Uh, I believe that if I have to pick up uh, a few people who don't deserve help, if there's any such thing, in order to help all the people that do deserve it. I'm willing to have a little swap in the system, a little excess, uh, yep, there's cheaters out there, we know it, but we're going to pick everybody up so that we get all the people who deserve. Now, my brother, makes a, and conservatives in general, make a different argument. They say, but if we crack down on the cheaters, there's more available for the people who really need it, which is not... A bogus argument. It, it is a legitimate argument. It, there, there, there's a logic to oh, that. I'd take issue to that. Well, then let's do well, it. Cost-benefit analysis is exactly how much money do you spend to catch the few people that cheat? And the amount of money spent to catch those 
Puchitas exceeds the amount of money that they would have used if they had participated in the system. So if you've created a bureaucracy that's denying people the ability to participate, paying them much more money than what it would have cost to just say, whoops, there's a little slop there, let's deal with it. And what's the cost when you catch them? What's the enforcement when you catch them? I mean, are you put them in... Are you putting them in prison? Yeah, you keep them homeless. At the cost? You keep them homeless. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Exactly. So, so <laughs> you know, you've won the game. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I, you know, you know, people are desperate when they're homeless. I mean, I, I remember speaking with uh, there was a neighbor neighbor works um, re re uh, rehabs old apartment buildings. Uh, there was an open in a couple of years ago on uh, I believe it was Auburn Street, uh, three decker, made beautiful, had a little yard out there. Uh, there were single family parents that had moved in there, proud as a peacock, a nice place, nice little yard in the center city. Um, so I was speaking to a few people from, uh, from the North End, uh, you know, touching base with me that the fact that this is tax dollars, you know, it is tax dollars mm -hmm. coming from the feds or the state, it's tax dollars. Yep. Uh, so I says, well, you know, I, I think it's an interest of mine to take care of these inner city neighborhoods. Um, you know, do you have a nice house? Yeah. Do you have a 10 foot uh, fence with barbed wire around it? No. I says, you know what? When people get desperate, they do desperate things. If I gotta feed my kid, I'm going to get your TV. If I gotta feed your kid, I'm getting your TV. So it's in your best interest to make sure I'm living a quality of life. My kids are going to school. I'm living in a nice quality, respectful apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're paying for it. They're working. You know, so, so it's in our interest to help, uh, you know, to help the individuals that need help. Now, is there a beginning and an end? Yes, I agree there is. Uh, but, you know, it's not we have to come up with new solutions. There's best practices all over this country that oh, is taking yeah. care of every have issue we have. The, the wheel. No. There, there are programs out there. They, 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 they've, they've, they've called our federal system the, the, the laboratory of democracy. You know, the, right. Uh, right. Everybody's trying different techniques, and they're out there. All you've got to do is look for them and identify the one that might work in your town and give That's it right. a shot. That's and right. and you, you've been a, a big uh, uh, advocate for evidence-based solutions. Uh, is, and, and you've talked about, especially with regard to homelessness, you've gone right. out and sought out these. No, um, uh, uh, among them, uh, not requiring sobriety in order to get assistance. That's right. Um, that's right. that's a, a method. That it, it's, it's counterintuitive. You think, no, that, that's going the wrong direction, but it actually ends up working and resulting in sobriety. Yeah, ten, it, ten years ago, we believed the best practice out there was don't help anybody unless, they could, unless they're clean from drugs and alcohol. You know, ten years later, we're saying there's this thing called uh, housing first that are picking up the most chronic homeless, putting them in apartments, and every day somebody visits them, whether it's mental health, whether it's a health care, um, you know, whether it's a budgeting, whether it's savings, you know, putting their mm -hmm. money, budgeting their money. Uh, and they're finding that to be successful. Manchester does it. It's uh, now turned over to the, uh, um, you know, families in transition with the New Horizon. And it's been successful uh, of pulling people off the street. Eventually they get a job, they get on their own. And, and it's time to help and, somebody else. And it's time to pick up somebody else. Yep. Eventually, you start taking people off the streets. And, and, you know, people that you would never, never think. First of all, they didn't want your help. You know? They first, yeah, no, I'm all set. I'm going to live right here by the water. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's best practices out there that we already know works. It's a matter of putting it in. Well, that's always you've always been an advocate for years uh, of that. I'll never forget uh, when you told us here on the Progress Report several years ago about the the, the new method of dealing with homelessness that you right, just right, described. Right. I had never heard of it before, and and you're telling me it's been implemented in the city and it's working. So I, yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. things get done. That's how a volunteer, how an advocate, can accomplish something, and and that's a, an example by, of that. By volunteering, you bet it. One of the simplest issues that's one of the biggest issues with someone experiencing homelessness is a mailing address. I mean, there used to be a facility here in Manchester, a day facility on 140 Central Street that provided that service. So in order to get any assistance, whether it be uh, New Hampshire housing, 10-year wait, uh, Manchester housing, which is more reasonable, a couple of years wait, or, or even 
uh, medical care covered under the state, under the uh, Medicaid system. If you don't have an address, you cannot get these, you're not a citizen, you can't get these services. So that's one of the simplest things that presently doesn't exist for people that are experienced homeless in the city of Manchester. And it's probably one of the easier things to address to start moving forward. At, at so somebody who's homeless, we make it more difficult for them to get out of that. And, and you know? To, 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 to get a, a, a letter accepting a job application. Exactly. You, know, you can't even, they exactly. can't even notify you that, that they want to hire you. Right. This, and, and, and again, a simple solution. This is, we're, we're, we're talking under $10,000 to set up a, a room with boxes. a post office box. Exactly. Uh, you know, yep. um, and, and yep. there's, there's uh, plenty of people that currently are on the payroll that yep. could operate this without a real in, in, yep. impingement on the time that they are. Yeah, just, just like lockers, right? Yeah. Give them a locker so they don't have to carry all that stuff around and we're complaining about them putting it down on sidewalks. Give them a locker. Yeah, but you used a word that a lot of people object to. What's give. That? A yeah, lot of people you know object to that. There's, there's a, there, and, and you know, you got to respect the mindset because close to 50% of the people you talk to have it. And yeah. it, it's that, no, no, look, I've, I've worked for mine. You should work for yours. Uh, you oh, know, I agree 100%. And, and if but I don't see you working, then you're not doing it. Well, let's, give them the, <laughs> let's give them the opportunity to work. I agree. Listen, we're getting right to the end of the show. I, I know you wanted to make a quick announcement. I don't have the full three minutes, but if you can uh, quickly. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I can. There was, there, was a, uh, there was a bill that I put in with respect to uh, Manchester School uh, Districts having its own autonomy. I'm, a, I'm of the opinion that I think the city of Manchester doesn't need to get permission from the state to if they want to initiate something in our school district. Uh, so the bill passed the House and the Senate. The governor needs to, um, needs to sign it. If the governor signs it. Uh, then in November, we'll be looking for nine uh, charter commissioners um, to uh, work on that. This bill says and that, that, the that state would will separate be out. the uh, school district from the city. That's correct. Yeah, the school district would set its own budget. Uh, I've been an advocate of that for budget. decades. So uh, the, and the school board would be responsible for the money, and, and they'd be absolutely. elected on their own budget. And they'd be accountable. They'd be yeah. elected on their own budget, right? So, so I really like the sounds of that when I discussed it with you because I've said in many of the Alderman and uh, mayor meetings, and it's constantly hearing you didn't give us enough money, but you didn't spend the money right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, well, it that solves that definitely solves that problem, folks. We're coming to the end of this episode of the Progress Report. Thank you very much for staying with us. I'd like to thank both our guests. I hope that at least five people out there have been spurred to volunteer for something. And if more than that, then, then, then it, you will be noticed. It will have an impact on the city if more than five people volunteer this week. Um, it makes that big of a difference. And nothing you see in your day would exist without volunteers here in the city of Manchester. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced of that. And if you start volunteering and volunteer more, you're going to see it yourself. So thanks for watching. Uh, we will not be uh, live next week. It's the the 4th of July week, so there'll be no broadcast. Um, but we will be back on the other side of that with another great edition of the Pro Report with Bob Backus, and I might join him too. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great 4th of July. Switch over to NBC and watch those debates. It's going to be great. <laughs> See you later.